There is a doctrine of the Tehiyas Hamasim in the scriptures. It's found in 2 Shmuel chapter 6. He raiseth up the poor out of the dust and lifteth up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's and he hath set the world upon them. You might say, well, is this really teaching the Tehiyah Samasim? You have to go through the whole scripture and see everything from that perspective. The return from the Golas is itself a magnificent picture of being raised from the dead, the whole nation of Israel. Uh, when we see the Exodus, here are these slaves being released to new life. The Tehiyas Hamasim is found in Job 14.14. 14. And also, I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that in my flesh I will see God. Uh, just to paraphrase uh, Job 19, verses 25 to 27. Also, we have Psalm 17, verse 14 and 15. And Psalm 49, verses 14 and 15. And Psalm 73, verses 24 and tw to 26. And Isaiah 26, verse 19, and then the, the first three verses of Daniel chapter 12, the doctrine of the resurrection. And these worthless sons of Eli, they weren't going to see any such glory. They didn't know the Lord. And we see that when the king when the monarchy, when the Melech uh, is, uh, when the anointed king, when that institution comes into being, it is to protect the people from their enemies. And the greatest enemy of mankind is death. And this is the connection between the Melech HaMoshiach and the resurrection of the dead. And in 1 Samuel, chapter uh, 10 verse 1 we see this and we also uh, see it in other parts of the scripture uh, the Moshiach will not see Shahat his body will not see corruption uh, either the Bible is true or it isn't these martyrs who saw him alive and then went to their deaths off Kiddush Hashem with their testimony intact, not willing to give up what they had seen, even in the face of sure death, are another attestation of the truth here. Uh, but in 1 Samuel chapter 10, it says, Then Shmuel took a uh, vial of oil and he poured it upon his head and kissed him. He's talking about uh, the first king of Israel and said, Is it not because the Lord hath anointed thee to be captain over his inheritance? So the anointing of the king has a spiritual significance. He is Moshiach. And by this anointing, the king was set apart for service. And he represents God and the throne of Israel. And uh, we can't uh, get away from this glorious king, Melech Hamoshiach, in the scriptures. And he defeats the greatest enemy. He, he destroys death and brings immortality to light. And in Haggai chapter 2 verse 5 it says, The desired, the hemdot, of all nations will come. And this is a messianic reference to 1 Samuel 9.20. It says, On whom is all of Israel's hemdot? 
desire? What, on whom is it fixed? Is it not on you? In, in other words, on the king, the coming king, the Moshiach ben David. Of course, uh, that was still in the future when the first king was anointed, but the idea is there in Micah chapter 5, a messianic prophecy uh, uh, that uh, Micah, uh, uh, perhaps meditating on 1 Samuel 16, 1, uh, where God says to Samuel, I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehem, Bethlehemite. And I, I, it says, I have provided for myself a king among his sons. And the Mashiach had to be from the tribe of Judah, from the house of David. And Mashiach ben David had to fulfill all the scriptures, including the one in 2 Samuel uh, chapter 18, where he's pierced and hanging alive on a tree. And the Mavaser cannot run, the herald cannot run with the good news until this happens and somehow the serpent on the tree on the pole rather uh, is defeated and the seed of the woman defeats that serpent and when we look up we live and on the third day God will raise us up with him Hosea chapter 6 verse 2 so all these are references. Now, if you go to afii.org forward slash afii.pdf, page 336, you will see what I'm looking at here on the screen. And we are thinking now about communion with the Lord, not only with his death, but also with his resurrection. Because this lamb not only gets us out, he not only redeems us with his precious blood, but uh, he is the one who defeats death and leads us to Gan Eden. And any other claimant to the Messianic office cannot do that. It's impossible. It cannot happen. And in everything you need to grow a Messianic synagogue, there is a Hebrew text. And uh, when we look at the matzah, we remember, Baruch atah renoi oheinu melech ha'olam hamotzi lechem min ha'aretz. We remember the body of Moshiach that did not see shahat but was pierced with, with the stripes and the bruises we see on the matzah. And he said, this is my body. I am the Lamb of God, and this is my body. And then he takes the cup. Ну, конечно. Махровку, махровое полотенце вместе отдельно будем сушить, потому что у них... Аллилуйя. He takes the cup and he says Барук ата арнои алхейну мелеха олам борей париха гафен Blessed art thou, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine. And we want to give God the glory today that, that he has delivered us by his blood. You see, everything in a Tanakh is a foreshadow. You Amen. Have it is a foreshadow. A foreshadow. It says in the same way he took the cup after supper and said, This is the Brit Hahadashah. 
Badami in my blood. Asuzot le zikroni bako es shati shatu. Whenever you drink it, do this as a memorial of me. Hallelujah. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. And so we want to give God the glory today that he has delivered us and because he has defeated death and brought immortality to light, he is leading us out toward Gan Eden. So as we take this cup and we take this wonderful matzah with the piercings and the bruises, we see what it cost God to redeem us. We were truly slaves. And the redemption is the work of a lifetime because we are always thanking God and we're always remembering the blood of the Lamb and the redemption and the resurrection and the Tahiyas Hamasim and the Gan Eden and the glory and everything that's coming and all the scriptures in the Tanakh about the Tahiyas Hamasim. This is Judaism. If you don't have this, you don't have Judaism. This is what Judaism is promising. This is what it's all about. Not just the Olam Hazer, but the Olam Haba. And not just the Olam Haba, but the Tahiyas Hamasim that is in all those scriptures that I gave you. All those scriptures in the Psalms, in Daniel, and even in uh even in the uh, even in Sh Shmuel, even in the Torah, all through the scriptures. This is the promise. And what a glorious thing that God sent the Bar Enosh in the womb of a Ha'alma to be born as a lamb. There he was in the feeding trough with the other lambs and there he was dying on Pesach with the other lambs and there he was coming out of the tomb on the third day a victorious lamb who can get us out of Egypt out of bondage out of this world O oh, death where is your sting hallelujah now I'm going down to Georgia and I'm going to purchase a, a casket I'm going to be having a long conversation with an undertaker. I'm going to be setting my house in order, getting ready to leave this world. And I want to continue to take the Lord's tish, the Mashiach's tish, because it is part of the victory that I have over this world, the world of flesh and the devil, that he gave us that on the night of his arrest, he told us, this is my body. This is the blood of the Breed Hadashah. Do this in memorial of me. Do this thinking of me. And come after me. If anyone loves anything in this world more than me, he's not worthy of me. And if you read the uh, first uh, portion of Shmuel, you see that there were some unworthy ministers who did not know the Lord and they were not aware of the holiness of the ministry and they were doomed to a terrible judgment along with their father who did not correct them and they were going to be replaced and here we see a little boy, a child, a little child shall lead them, who's going to replace them as the leader of Israel. 
and he's talking about kissing the son, Sam, uh, Psalm 2, lest he be angry and you perish in the way. You've got to get right with the Moshiach. You have to discern his body and his blood and not take the uh, take the uh, Moshiach's tish unworthily. You have to see who you're dealing with, what it cost the lamb to get you out of Egypt. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter. You must understand he is Ben Dovid, but he's also the lamb of God. And you have to see that he is your sin bearer. He is the scapegoat of Yom Kippur. He is the fulfillment of all the blood sacrifices. If you don't see that, then you're like those worthless sons of Eli who profaned the sacrifices. And they also let down the people of God who were depending on them to be holy, and they were not. And so the Lord sent a little child and gave him a word, which he in turn gave to their father, which was a terrible word of judgment. And you see, when we come to the Lord's Supper, we want to escape that judgment. We want to repent. We don't want to eat and drink judgment on ourselves. We want to come to the Lord's table. We want to ask the Lord to cleanse us. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So when you go to afii.org forward slash afii.pdf and you look at page 336, you see what I'm looking at right here, which is the institution of the king, the Melech HaMoshiach, and all the credentials that he had to have. If your Melech HaMoshiach is moldering in the grave in Old Monte Fiore Cemetery, he is not your savior. He cannot get you out of Egypt. He cannot get you out of bondage. He cannot lead you to Gan Eden. You are very deceived and lost, and you have to turn to the Lord today while you can. Turn to the Lord. Turn to the Holy Scriptures. Turn to the Holy Scriptures. Lord, we pray for all the Hasidim, all the Haredim, all the ultra-Orthodox who are lost. The word of the Lord has not yet been revealed to them. They're like Samuel was before the Lord opened his eyes to the word. And the word came to him. And he was now a believer. He was now set apart by the word of God. And I thank you, Lord, that we can crave the pure milk of the word of God if our hearts are opened. And if the reality of the Breed Hadashah has occurred in our life. Hallelujah. Lord, we take this cup right now. And we take this matzah and we discern the lamb, his piercings, his bruises, his death in our place for us, and his blood. We are redeemed not by corruptible silver or gold, but by the precious blood, incorruptible, immortal, eternal, of the Moshiach ben Dovid who purchased us. We are not our own. We can't do with our life as we want, as we would like. We belong to someone else. Our life belongs to him. We must do what he says. And if he tells us to go down and purchase a casket and set our affairs in order and that we're leaving this world, we have to say, yes, Lord, yes, because this is not our home. And we don't have thanatophobia because he died a death in our place. And therefore, we will not see death. 
that is the second death in the lake of fire because we have been salvaged by the grace of God and Lord we come before you this morning and we take this cup and we take this matzah and we ask you Lord to give us the assurance of our salvation today that by his blood we were passed over and the angel of death will not come near our house and now we are free we can cross that threshold across the Jordan across the Red Sea even into Gan Eden and the Lord will be with us and he will lead us and he will never leave us or forsake us and he will receive us and he will say well done good and faithful servant and we will not look back if we take uh, our hand to the plow and keep looking back we're not fit we're not fit for the kingdom of God we will not look to the left or to the right but straight ahead with the Lord himself in front of us and no idols and no other uh, savior no other name under heaven by, by which we must be saved so we thank you Lord we take this cup we take this this matzah and we receive it right now hallelujah praise God and everyone said amen